It's like, you know, trying to get people to understand that the most simplest things, wearing the mask, wash your hands, keeping social distancing, stay home if you need to stay home, don't go around large gatherings, don't have big pool parties. Nah, you know, it's just this maverick uh, kind of mentality. You can't tell me what to do. And it's causing us to now have a prolonged, prolonged period where you look at other countries, they have bounced back in a couple of months um, and they've been able to control it better. Uh, Americans, when it comes to things of this nature, just for whatever reason, just say, I'm, I'm not going to comply, and, uh, and, and we are where we are with it. You know? I hear the cry of some people saying, you know, you're violating my, my civil rights and, and, and this kind of thing. You know, there is uh, a time when government needs to step in and curtail some activity um, for the health and, and the safety of, of the people at large. You know, you can have stores that says, you know, uh, no shirt, no shoes, no service. Well, let's just add to that, no shirt, no shoes, no mask, no service. And, you know, the, the, the shirt requirement and the shoes requirement has been around for, for years, for decades. You know, the positivity rate in Tarver County uh, last week was very high, or the last two weeks was very high. You know, it was above the state average. Uh, the state was looking for a positivity rate around 5%. Uh, we were trending upwards of seven, seven and a half percent at one point. Uh, we've come down some since then, um, but it was still a, a fast enough increase that we needed to do something to bring that curve back down. Um, also, our infection rate, I think we're over 310, I think, today of uh, persons who are in Tarver County who have tested positive for COVID. So that number can, continues going up. If you talk to Ken Cozell over at the hospital, the hospitalization numbers are slowly going up here in Tarver County. So um, we're trending all in the wrong direction. And we know from talking to the medical experts that the death rate tends to lag behind these other indicators. So if your positivity rate starts to go up, if your hospitalization rate starts to go up, if your infection rate starts to go up, you can probably be safe to assume that your death rate is going to probably start to go up. So we've been, we've been holding hard and fast at five, thank God, deaths. And, and our, of course, our thoughts and prayers go out to the family. But we've been holding uh, at five deaths for the last week. Um, but if the numbers keep on trending in the direction that they are, um, it's probably safe to suspect that that number is going to also be going up a bit. So we what, we're, what we're looking at doing is saying um, that face masking is a requirement. Uh, that we're looking at uh, making sure that it's face masking in public buildings are, is, is warm, is, is mandatory, uh, and, and going right along with the governor's mandate uh, requiring face masks in public. Yes. You know, these are very simple uh, health uh, uh, requirements, safety requirements. Wearing a face mask in public, uh, wearing a face mask when you're in a public setting, store, restaurant, going into a restaurant, uh, um, should be should be should be worn, and not just the patrons coming in, but also the people working behind the counter, the people working um, back in the kitchen area. Understanding it's hot, understand it may be uncomfortable, but you're um, preparing food that people are going to consume. So you, you're at the top of the chain here when it comes to transmission. If you're preparing food, you should have a mask on. And, these, this, and this hasn't changed, but we just need to say it uh, more forcefully. And if we need to now put uh, civil penalties in place, we're going to be uh, discussing that as well. Now, uh, now Dr. Wiley, through, through the food enforcement uh, article, the state article, uh, she has the power to go in and basically close a, an establishment down if she finds that they are just abusing uh, and or not following the, uh, the precautions. So um, she does have the criminal uh, um, citation that she can levy. Um, we're looking at considering whether we need to also look at some civil citations as well. Dr. Wiley also came before us regard, regarding crowd size, indoor and outdoor, the size of events. Um, should there be a, a, a limit to that? Um, there is no magic number. I mean, I, I couldn't right now say the number has to be 50 or 60 or 100. Um, what I am proposing that council look at uh, is that if there is an outdoor event and uh, uh, the event needs to be defined, and, and, and I, I'm going to offer some different uh, definable language um, that there is an emission that's being taken, there is a sale of some um, 
food or beverage or commissary, uh, if they're providing paid uh, uh, entertainment, uh, if they're providing paid catering services, uh, if they're providing um, uh, restroom uh, facilities for their guests. If they, if they meet one or all five of those requirements, then, then they're an event. And if they're over 50 people, then they need for the um, uh, planning and zoning department to come down, take a look at the event, the size of the event, what are you going to have? If this is, is this an outdoor concert? Is this um, a book reading? Whatever the event may be. And, there, and then allow uh, the planning department uh, working with the vendor to come up with an appropriate size limit for that event. So. That's about it. Again, we were just trying, we're just trying to stress to people with that these are just the, the more basic safety precautions we have. And if you talk to Dr. Wiley or you listen to Dr. Fauci or you listen to Dr. Bright or any other other national um, health experts, they're telling you it is, it is so simple. It's, it's ABC stuff, you know. Wear the mask, keep your distance, wash your hands, um, don't go around large gatherings of, of strangers, you know. Um, and if we, would, if we as Americans would just <laughs> listen and, and follow these simple directions, uh, hopefully that we can get through the rest of the, the summer and into the fall season without seeing the bounce back and have to go off a bit, go into another shutdown. Right now, especially when you got people who are really being hit economically, you know, the last thing you want to do is slap a $5,000 fine on top of them. And, you know, we're, we're watching also, you know, the fact that, you know, a lot of these uh, abatements or um, um, suspensions of evictions, you know, that's going to come to an end uh, probably soon. Um, the uh, unemployment extension uh, is probably going to come to uh, an end pretty soon. Um, there's also an abatement on uh, utility, you, uh, you know, each utility can't shut you off uh, right now because that's, um, that's been abated. Uh, but unless these things are extended by the state uh, and also by the federal government, you know, we could see a rash of, of eviction notices coming across the district court uh, on the next couple of months if that part of it is not extended. Uh, if the abatement on utility services is not extended, you could see a lot of people looking at um, uh, cutoff notices uh, going into the fall and winter months, which is the worst time you want to be without heat. So, you know, we're, we're by no stretch out of the woods. You know, there, there's so much other things <laughs> to look at. Um, and if we can't get people to do the basic stuff uh, as far as masking and distancing and hand washing, you know, I, I really am um, not as hopeful uh, or as optimistic going looking at October and November as I should be. As I we were go we were going to do it uh, at the... Um, Eastern High School at the Tarbot County Auditorium. And we had, uh, staff had gone down, I think the auditorium was 1,200 seats. Uh, staff had gone down and measured. We had our buildings and grounds department go down and actually measure the room. And uh, we came up with a number around 300 uh, with social distancing in place. Uh, and then we came up with an idea of how to handle people who wanted to speak, because not everybody who comes wanna speak. And we were going to do a speaker's row and do numbers one, two, three, four, five, so that they wouldn't be walking over top of each other. Uh, and then we were bringing a microphone to them so they wouldn't have to come out of their seats. So we had a number of things that we thought were, were good health measures in place. You know, we were doing uh, um, temperature checks at the door. Uh, again, you know, 300, first 300 in, and we had a speaker's row. So we, we had what we thought was a good plan in place to keep people safe. Well, uh, our health officer came over and she said, you know, 300 people in a room and um, indoors as opposed to outdoors, your likelihood of transmission goes up by 18 times as likely to be um, in infected indoors and outdoors. So, uh, and then the length of that meeting, you know, when you talk about a public hearing, it can go on an hour or two hours, and especially something like the Tower Boys, I'm sure um, we were gonna have a, a fairly lengthy discussion. So um, based on her recommendation, uh, we yielded and said, well, we'll go back to the Bradley Room. Uh, Bra the Bradley Room, we went from 22 seats down to 10 seats. Um, and now we're looking to do, basically, uh, we're, we're asking people just to call in, you know, just, just to call in, and we did provide the numbers on the website to call in. Uh